As of the 1st of November 1991, new regulations will be enforced which will affect the annual MOT test. Most notable of the changes to the test will be the introduction of checks on exhaust emissions. The checks will affect all petrol engine vehicles that fall into the scope of the MOT test scheme. Two levels of emissions are going to be checked and they are applicable to the age of the vehicle. Vehicles first used from the 1st of August 1975 up until the 1st of August 1983 will be subject to a carbon monoxide level with a maximum of 6%. Vehicles then first used from the 1st of August 1983 will be subject to a maximum carbon monoxide level of 4.5%. For all the petrol engine vehicles within the scope of the scheme, they will all be affected if they were first used since the 1st of August 1975 to a hydrocarbon level of 1,200 parts per million. As well as the obvious implications to the vehicle owner and the service repair garage, they have to ensure that the vehicle will pass the MOT test. There's other legislation which concerns the purchase of the equipment that the MOT station will have to have to ensure that the vehicle passes the test. That's the exhaust gas analyzer. It's interesting to note that the gas analyzers are also going to have to comply with legislation. They will have to be approved to at least one of two levels. The first and lower level of approval for the gas analysis equipment ensures that the equipment has to conform to what is referred to as OIML class one or class two to the CO or carbon monoxide channel only. OIML is an internationally recognized approval or legislation organization, but additionally, the equipment will also be able to comply with other recognized organizations also specifying approval for the gas analysis equipment. The second but more stringent level of approval, which comes into force when the equipment is installed after the 1st of November 91, that ensures that the equipment must conform with OIML class one or class two, but on the CO and the HC channel together. Bosch, who are Europe's largest producer of automotive systems and components, are also Europe's largest producer of diagnostic equipment. Because of their position within the automotive industry in Europe, they have already had to produce equipment to comply with forthcoming EEC regulations for exhaust emissions, which in fact will be tighter than the regulations soon to be imposed in the UK. Therefore, Bosch already produced equipment that conforms to OIML Class 1. Present gas checks in the service repair workshop usually rely on setting the carbon monoxide level to specifications laid down by the vehicle manufacturer. If only this single gas check were to be used in the MOT test, it would in fact allow a poor running vehicle to pass. This vehicle is set to run at 1.5% which is well below the 4.5% CO level, which is applicable. The engine is, however, only running on three of the four cylinders, and therefore unburnt fuel, or hydrocarbons, are being emitted from the exhaust pipe. Now that we have identified the two gases which will be applicable for the MOT test, we ought to perhaps explain and emphasize why these gases are being introduced to the test. It's very simple. Both carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons are harmful to the atmosphere and, of course, to ourselves. The other aspect we can perhaps identify as well is what the two gases actually are. We can use an analogy very simply by striking a match. If we regard the match as the fuel or the petrol being taken in by the engine, and obviously the atmosphere and the air, which will also be drawn in by the engine, when they combine, we have a combustion process, much the same as the match burning now. When the combustion process is finished, we're left with completely unburnt wood. That is equivalent to the unburnt fuel being emitted from the exhaust pipe. The charred and black part of the match, that's partially burnt wood, which of course is equivalent to the partially burnt fuel being emitted from the pipe. That's our carbon monoxide. It should of course be remembered that the two gas check 
as applied to the MOT from November 1991, is only the tip of the iceberg. As from January the 1st, 1993, petrol engine vehicles will have to be fitted with a catalytic converter. The catalytic converter and other associated components are fitted to effectively reduce the emissions of the harmful gases, the carbon monoxide and the hydrocarbons. The principle of the system is simple. The catalyst is located in the exhaust pipe and in effect it acts as a second combustion process. The harmful carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons are reduced during the process to a minimum. And if we examine this cutaway version, we can clearly see the ceramic honeycomb, which is coated with precious metals such as platinum and rhodium. Stainless steel case and the ceramic obviously because of the heat generated within the catalyst, which is often in excess of six, seven or eight hundred degrees centigrade. In order for the catalyst to function, the air fuel ratio passed into the engine must be maintained within a very tight band. The ideal ratio is now referred to as a lambda value of one. In spite of the complexity of the modern vehicle engine management system, it is necessary to provide a sensor for the fuel system to measure the air fuel ratio passing through the engine and the value of the exhaust gas. The sensor is obviously referred to as a lambda sensor, but in fact measures the oxygen content of the exhaust gas. The signal from the lambda sensor is passed through to the electronic control unit, which in turn passes the signal to the mixture formation system, which invariably will be an injection system. The injection system then provides the correct air fuel ratio to the engine and once again the exhaust gas is then monitored by the lambda sensor. This continual process is referred to as a closed loop system. It is worth examining the catalytic converter and the lambda sensor in their true locations on a vehicle that is representative of those that we will encounter in 1993. This vehicle is fitted with a Bosch monojectronic injection system and in association with that fuel system the vehicle uses a catalytic converter and a lambda sensor. The lambda sensor is normally located just at the top of the downpipe. Now that we've identified and examined the components and the technology that will be used on motor vehicles produced as of 1993 Let's examine the exhaust gas readings that these type of vehicles will produce. We've already identified that the CO and HC levels will be extremely low. And if we look at the readings being produced by this vehicle, we can clearly see that the hydrocarbon reading is virtually zero, as is the carbon monoxide reading. The two readings that we have left, which allow us to identify what the gas values are on the vehicle, are the oxygen, O2, and the carbon dioxide, CO2. Additionally, with this item of Bosch test equipment, we can actually examine the lambda value from the exhaust pipe. The lambda value now is giving us an indication of the condition of the engine management system, the catalytic converter, and the lambda sensor. When we check the gas readings on a vehicle equipped with a catalytic converter and lambda sensor, it's interesting to note that all the gas values are totally dependent on the condition of the engine, the condition of the catalytic converter, and the operation of the lambda sensor. We can actually illustrate this by simulating a weak mixture and noting the change in the gas values. Note that the oxygen level has increased this is indicating excess oxygen in the mixture. The carbon dioxide reading has gone down, indicating poor combustion efficiency. And the lambda gas value has also gone up, and again backing up that we have a weak mixture. We can also simulate a rich mixture, and again note the changes in the gas values. When we enrich in the mixture, the oxygen level remains at zero. The carbon dioxide level again reduces, indicating poor combustion. And the lambda value 
will also decrease, again indicating a change in the mixture strength. The lambda value in both cases has illustrated the fact that the gases passing through to the catalytic converter are incorrect for good catalyst operation. Although we have already identified that vehicles first used since the 1st of August 1975 will be subject to MOT tests on exhaust emissions, we should also point out that vehicles produced before 1975, such as this superbly restored 1929 Triumph, will also be checked for their exhaust emissions when they too go in for their MOT check. These vehicles will be subject to a visual inspection to ensure that the emissions from the exhaust do not contain excessive smoke. To recap, we've therefore identified that a CO gas analyzer on its own, as good as this particular unit is, is not going to be acceptable for the MOT test. CO on its own does not necessarily indicate a vehicle fault. Most CO only units are not printer compatible, which is essential and is a requirement for the MOT tests. So we need something a little bit more advanced than the CO unit only. Many European countries already have legislation for emissions testing that is far tougher than the regulations proposed for the UK. And their intentions are to make the legislation far more stringent. Bosch, as the leading manufacturer of vehicle systems and also gas analyzers, already have the experience to produce gas analyzers to meet the specifications of the present as well as the future. Take, for example, the Bosch 836 gas analyzer. It is already approved to OIML class one and is printer compatible. It can display the four gases plus the lambda value and to comply with any future possible legislation for gas analyzers, it can display engine speed and oil temperature. The right choice for today and tomorrow is Bosch.